So, we have a new product video today. Today we're going to be putting on some RNG parts, mainly a radiator guard, and some engine case covers, uh, the racing versions. So, I'm going to get home, and we're going to start on that. Okay, so... Uh, today we're going to be installing some new products for the Fireblade. Uh, so uh, what I have started to do is I've started to unbolt the fairing but I realise I have to undo the whole RNG frame, frame slider kit to get the fairings off which is an absolute nightmare. But today we're going to be putting on A RNG uh, radiator guard. I'm going to be removing that nasty sticker. I'm going to be putting that on. And uh, this is pretty simple. Uh, the bolt at the bottom goes into a bolt in the radiator in roughly the same area. Uh, and uh, the, the top two bits just got these little holes the zip ties so this is going to be very quick um, but you have to get access to the fairing to access that area the other parts we'll be doing is RNG uh, engine case covers and I don't really need these because I have uh, obviously frame sliders, but a frame slider isn't an engine case cover. These are the racing ones, so they come with like little pucks which you can replace if they're the only things that get damaged, so that would be a very light fall. And the, the, the main reason why I got these is not only is it going to be really protection, but it's more black black on black right now it's just like kind of what, what who are you and why are you there black just cover up all your problems with more black so um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get started off with moving the frame sliders and the fairings and i'll come back to you when this bike is basically naked okay so i've got all the fairing off um and to be honest, now is a good time. Now is a good time to take a break because getting the fairing off is no doubt the hardest thing about all of this. Um, so if you've got the RNG frame sliders, you're going to have to remove the RNG sliders first before you can remove the side fairings. Uh, so I wish I didn't install them when I did. Um, the belly pan. So the belly pan has this kind of not sure if you can see it there but like it's got a seam all the way through it don't try and disconnect that in the middle just undo it from both sides and drop it from the bottom and when you're dropping it from the bottom just make sure you've got some rags underneath the bike so that it drops onto a nice soft surface doesn't get scratched although it is the bottom of the fairing it's probably some kind of scratches from the dirt that gets flipped up anyway but you don't want to add more, right? So, it's nice soft stuff on the bottom. Um, now's a good time to get in there, clean it up, uh, and clean the inside of the fairing. And, uh, yeah, I think we'll do the rad guard first. So while I'm under here, uh, don't know when I'm next gonna have access uh, to this bike, so uh, at least underneath it. So I've given it a bit of a clean, and got round to the pipes, as you can see there, and it's starting to brown. So basically, I stand by this product here. Corrosion and stain removal is very quick. So I haven't had to spend too long. I'm just gonna clean inside that engine bay a little bit. And then I'm gonna mount the radiator. Um, not sure if you can see the bluing that's starting to happen on my slip-on titanium I basically applied stain remover on the other areas and I basically dusted off all the plastics and you know giving it a bit of a clean underneath because 
I'm going to be under here for a good long while. Okay, so now I have applied the sticky foam around it, cut it up, uh, and that is to stop vibration. And so now I'm going to offer it up to the bike, bolt it in, and then try and zip tie the top. This is the one they say to zip tie. There's another one here, and they say don't zip tie that unless it's a race bike and you've cut away all the ABS cables. So apparently the only mounting points is here at the bottom where the bolt goes in and a zip tie up there, which I guess it'll be pretty solid. It's not going to go anywhere, but I'm still going to have a little go over here and try and avoid these ABS cables. Let's see what I can do. Okay, so... Oh, not, sure. not sure if you can see in there, but... It is a black rad guard, so it's going to be difficult to see. Um, indeed, you cannot put on the second zip tie. Uh, the first zip tie, you can get access, you can get visual through, through there. And if you move the forks out the way by twisting the bars, you can kind of thread it through. And there is, there is something metal which you can thread. Let's zip tie on and a quick test to see if it's going to rattle on me. Let's do that. No rattling. It's pretty solid. So uh, the foam's doing its job, and the, the one zip tie is enough. It's not going anywhere. I mean, it's, it's solid, it's bolted on at the bottom there. So, bolted on and zip tied at the top. Foam's stopping the rattling. So that's that's the red guard done. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on to the next pair. Case covers. Okay, so it's time to offer up the uh, case cover to the engine. And so there are these little uh, washer bits there and basically they pop into the holes there. So this one belongs in a hole somewhere, where is it? There. So I'll just pop that in there. Sorry, I had to move the phone out of the way. Once that's in there, we can uh, quite simply offer up the, uh, the cover. And if you try and move it around, it should be pretty snug. Okay. Now I've been trying to find, so these are the bolts that come with little washers. The tallest one, which is this one, goes in here. If you read the instructions, and go and go by this video, go by my instructions. But basically, do everything hand tight. And uh, what I've got here is I've got a digital torque wrench. It's been tested uh, against a high quality torque wrench, and it's still accurate. Not sure if you know what a torque wrench is, but you're going to need one. Uh, Google torque wrench. Um, the bolts were about 14 newton meters torque to loosen up, and the RG uh, instructions say uh, 10 newton meters when tightening. And I think that's because these bolts will be part of the impact, so you don't want them to be as tight as the engine bolts per se, uh, because it will send a, you know, the bolts could send shocks into the very piece that you're trying to protect. So they're just a little bit, I don't know. I mean, RNG says they're 10 newton meters. They were 14 to come out. So I'm gonna do 10 newton meters. Uh, the engine's cold, so it stopped expanding. So 10 newton meters uh, should be good to go. So I'm going to tighten these up now. Couldn't find my high, uh, high temperature thread locker. So maybe I'll just redo these bolts when I find it. Really got a crack on, it's getting late. Uh, instructions say it takes one hour to do this, one hour to do the radiator. Um, yeah, if you got all the fairings off the bike. Uh, it doesn't include putting the fairings back on either. Okay, just, bef just before we get started on this one, we just got to remove the dipstick and the kind of the bit that holds the, the case. So I have to undo these bolts. 
and we have to fit these once the uh, case cover is on. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, right hand side case cover is on. Oh. Radiator guard is on. The left hand side is on. It's looking very black now, huh? Right, I'm going to bang these fairings on. Always a good idea when you're taking your fairings off is to have a little bowl, put everything in. And so when you get to the end, if you've got any bolts left, uh, you're truly fucked. So like, the, the instructions say one hour for the radiator guard, one hour for the fairings, uh, uh, the racing covers, but then when you start taking it all apart, you see all this like, this dirt and grime and stuff. You just, you just end up cleaning the bloody bike on the inside basically and you just like by the time you're done with all of this you are well and truly over four hours okay bottom fairing is partially on and what i did was uh it was all grimy and stuff i waxed the inside of it now that wouldn't stop shit eventually getting in and staying there but it should help in the early days of me getting back out in the shit so uh yeah the longer i can prevent i mean hopefully by the time i'm taking this off again uh it would have survived fairly well for another wax so there we go we got one side of the bike completed just nice and all black now probably you're thinking what's the difference well you don't own the bikes it's probably harder to tell the difference but Having a black engine with a black bike certainly makes a difference. Look at that. Can't have enough black on this. One small problem. One of the fairing washers has become ah, fucked. Which means I'm going to have a real sodding problem getting the last bolt in on this side. <sighs> Otherwise, I'd be done in 15 minutes. Okay, second side is almost done. Just need to finish off some bolts and stick on the last frame slider. So uh, there'll be pictures at the end of this video of the results. But basically I was so lucky with that deformed rubber washer because I could just hold it with my finger there while screwing it in. If it was any of the others, it would have been impossible. And that's what you get for over tightening things in, in previous jobs. So. It's a good warning sign for me. Um, yeah. Let's get to it. Let's finish it up, pack away. I've still got all the tools and shit to pack away. So like, oh, that's like another freaking half an hour, 45 minutes, like one hour job. One hour fucking job. Okay guys, that's it. Tell me what you think in the comments below. It's been a long night, so that's it from me. I'll just do a quick walk around and then I'll go to bed. <laughs>